from the burden of sin. Power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. That there is still power. Power in the blood of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus. Jesus, your King. There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. You live daily. His. Oh, there is wonderful power in the blood. Working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, sing it, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is blood of the Lamb. Oh, in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Oh, there is still power, power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we ready our hearts for the word of the Lord, would you put our prayer Thank you, Jesus. and ministry cell on this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just give you the praise and the glory, and the reverence and the worship. We exalt your holy name today. And we bless your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Hey, hallelujah. hallelujah. Your name is to be praised. Come on, somebody bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I can't hear some of you, some of you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You need to bless you. Come on, I want everyone to just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah and give it praise for the blood. It's by the blood. Of Jesus. It's by the blood of the cross. Yes, it's by the name of Jesus as we sang the songs of the blood today. Yes. We just worship the Lord yes, in the beauty of holiness. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome into this place. Welcome. To this broken vessel, you desire to abide in the praises of your people, so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. 
time you sing welcome welcome be acknowledged the holy spirit to this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. I'm going to ask Pastor Colley just to do something quick. Just to speak a word on the screen and shall just release a prophetic word of the Lord over all of you in this house today. And also those who are listening or watching, she's going to release the word of the Lord. Just bless you. A word over you and your family and those who are sick, who need healing, who need a miracle. Just receive my faith as she comes and just takes just a few moments just to release the word of the Lord to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on and shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying purpose. Hallelujah, purpose and destiny. Hallelujah, I want to declare over everyone under the sound of my voice this morning that whatever, whatever power, amen, whatever being, whatever person that is fighting against your purpose, that is stifling your purpose and destiny from going forward this morning, that they be burnt Hallelujah, by the fire of the Lord. I want you to picture something. Yes. Hallelujah for me. Picture, hallelujah, a fire, an outside fire. Amen. Hallelujah for those in the Caribbean. You know you take, even in Africa and uh, rural areas, you take three stones and some sticks and some fire. I want you to picture throwing a blanket. Hallelujah, over, the fi over that fire. Hallelujah, and just imagine what would happen this morning. Well, this people of God is your destiny. Hallelujah, and your purpose. Whatever that's trying to destroy your purpose and destiny this morning, hallelujah, it shall be destroyed in its place this morning in the name of Jesus. For everyone who is sick, hallelujah. For everyone who is afflicted, everyone who is tormented, in the name of Jesus, we bind, hallelujah, that spirit of sickness, that spirit of torment, hallelujah. And I hear the word of the Lord and it's saying, hallelujah, some of you who think, hallelujah, you are sick and even being tormented, especially in your mind, it is nothing but a spirit of fear mongering this morning in the name of Jesus. So I bind that spirit of fear mongering with, with heavenly chains this morning. Hallelujah. All you could think for someone, all you could think of is fear. Everything you say that you're going outside, hallelujah, you are afraid that a bird, hallelujah, might come and hallelujah, attack you. Hallelujah. You say that you want to go and work in the garden. Hallelujah. You're scared that a snake, it just come across your mind. A snake is going to come, hallelujah, and attack you. You're going to the food store and the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, you might get into a car crash. You have to be so careful. Hallelujah. We bind that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that whatever power Hallelujah, that is coming against the people of God this morning that you are defeated. We yeah. command you to cease and desist in the mighty name of Jesus and even stronger word than that. We command you to die in the mighty and powerful name. Hallelujah of Jesus this morning. I speak yes. overcoming power upon the people of God. I speak overcoming spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. A spirit of overcoming. A spirit of more than a conqueror upon the people of God this morning in the mighty and powerful name. Hallelujah of Jesus. And for that one who is hanging on the wayside. Hallelujah. This morning. Hallelujah. You feel like you are saved. Or this evening where you are acting saved, but you are still sleeping around. Hallelujah. You are still lying. Hallelujah. Up to this morning. Hallelujah. 
You tell a lie to cover that other lie. Hallelujah, this morning you are still cheating. Hallelujah, you are hurting. Hallelujah, the people around you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak to you this morning. Hallelujah, the spirit of conviction shall come upon you. You shall receive the power to overcome, hallelujah, to renounce that spirit of lying, cheating, stealing, hallelujah, and deceiving. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is that you are searching for this morning, hallelujah, to soothe and to appease that flesh, hallelujah, we root up that falling ground of that flesh this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we release the divine earthquake of the Lord, hallelujah, to bring fear and trembling and unrest upon that flesh, hallelujah, to wrestle, to dig up, hallelujah, that flesh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that spirit of flesh I'm talking about, in the name of Jesus, that it shall surrender to the spirit of God, it shall surrender to the power, hallelujah, of God, it is nothing that you can do by yourself, but by the spirit, hallelujah, and the anointing of God, we break and destroy, hallelujah, that yoke, hallelujah, the yoke of your father's house, generational curses, hallelujah, you find yourself doing the things that your father did, your mother did, your uncle did, hallelujah, hallelujah, your mother divorced, your father divorced, your uncle divorced, now you are going through a divorce, hallelujah, your father and your mother cheated around on each other, your uncle, your auntie did the same thing, you find yourself doing the same thing, you find your spouse, hallelujah, cheating on you, hallelujah, when I want you to look, hallelujah, and picture the faces of your children, hallelujah, this morning, and your future, which is bright, your future, which is full of prosperity, hallelujah, prosperity and hope, and hallelujah, in God this morning, hallelujah, I want you to look at your destiny and your purpose, if you never had it before, hallelujah, you just take a minute and ask yourself, I wonder how far I can go. I wonder where I can be. Hallelujah. With the Lord. Hallelujah. On my side. Well, I'm ready to take a chance this morning. <coughs> Sorry, because I've tried everything else. And now I'm going to try Jesus. I'm going to try the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. This morning, no longer would anybody trick me. No longer would I fall to things that will make me, hallelujah, be in despair. That will make me lose hope. That would make me feel blind that I can't see and don't know where. Hallelujah to go this morning. I am going to stand in Christ. I am going to receive his anointing. Lift up your hand wherever you are and receive the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Lord that breaks and destroys every yoke. Hallelujah. With a heart that is full of repentance. Hallelujah. I'm going to help somebody. With a heart that is full of repentance. With a heart of surrender. Hallelujah. This morning. Hallelujah. I speak that the anointing of the Lord fall upon you in grace and destroy every yoke. Break that drug addiction. Hallelujah. No more smoking, hallelujah, marijuana. No more alcohol, hallelujah. To hallelujah, hallelujah, this morning. It is broken, it is broken, it is broken, hallelujah. It is broken, feel the power of the Lord this morning moving in your midst, hallelujah. Feel the spirit, hallelujah, of the Lord like a fire upon you this morning moving in your midst, hallelujah. The power, hallelujah, the hammer, the hammer of the Lord that breaks rocks, hallelujah, to pieces, hallelujah, the fire, hallelujah, of the Lord, the sword of the Lord, feel it, hallelujah, feel it upon you, feel it upon you, hallelujah, if this is you, shout amen, feel it upon you as it breaks and destroys and reform and transform, hallelujah, this morning that you may be conformed to the power and the spirit, hallelujah, of the most high God.
hallelujah. This is your time to move forward. Get in Christ, hallelujah, and move forward in Jesus' name. Glory be to the name of the Lord. If that's you, type amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Oh, glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Praise his holy name. 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 Bless his holy name this morning. Thank you for that powerful word, woman of God. As we get ready into the word, you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I just felt the Lord wanted her to release a word to you today. If you need a word from the Lord, get ready for a powerful release of the Lord's word today. Like this, share this quickly. We're going to dive into the word. Get your Bibles, get your notepads, get your books. Get ready to, to jump into the word of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise. Somebody give the Lord worship. Somebody give the Lord all the honor that's due to his name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy to be magnified. You're worthy to be lifted up. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. And we are praying. Hallelujah. We are praying. We are praying for those who require and desire prayer this morning. Just let us know your prayer requests as we are reaching out and praying for you and your family and your loved ones. We are praying for those who are hurting and in need today. We are praying for those who are need a touch from the Lord. We are praying for families. We're praying for homes. This is the month of miracles in the name of Jesus. This is the month of victory. Say so this, this is the month of miracles. This is, this is the month of victory. Uh, you got it. You got it. Uh, indeed, this is a month of miracles and victories. And uh, we've been seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. Uh, hallelujah. We've been seeing what? Miracles, signs, and wonders. I begin to pray and I begin to seek the Lord. I begin to ask the Lord to move. And one of the things the Lord blessed me with this past week was without even a long, hard prayer, I asked the Lord just to do one thing for me. And within the next, within 24 hours, that prayer was answered. There were other things I was praying about, but again, the Lord is moving. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know that he is answering prayers. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord still answers prayers. The Lord still answers what? Prayers. prayers. The Lord is still answering prayers to your prayers and my prayers as we seek him. And this is the time we must seek the Lord. He said, I will seek your face. David said, I will seek your face, O Lord. And so I want us to seek his face. The world is changing and shaking, but the Lord is still worthy. Yes. He is still moving by his mighty power in the earth. Amen. He's still moving by his special grace. If you're with me, we're going to turn our Bibles. Today we're still talking about, uh, this is part two of I Am Spirit. Kingdom living. I am spirit. Say, I am, I am. Spirit. spirit. Kingdom living. Kingdom uh huh. This, this life is a spirit led life. This life is a miraculous life. This life is a holy life. This life is a victorious life. And we must live this life through the realm of faith. Now today again, like I said last week in part one, uh, this message is going to change your life. And so if you need to leave, leave quickly because after today there's going to be no reason for any excuse. Are you hearing me? 
I said, after today, there'll be no reason for any what? Excuses to what God did or is doing in your life. I am a spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. I am a spirit. Truly 
live a life after the Spirit of God will get victory. John chapter 4 verse 24, read with me. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That word that God is Jehovah, Yahovah, Yahovah, Yahoshua. Amen. God is a spirit. Now where did we get this from? Jesus was talking to a lady on top of the mountain and uh, the woman said to him in John chapter 4 verse 19, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. The woman goes on to tell Jesus, our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. <clears throat> Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour will come when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. John chapter 4 verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Jesus is explaining to this woman, this Samaritan woman, that uh, you are worshiping uh, a God who you don't know of, you don't have history with. Amen? Hallelujah. How many people do you know worshiping? They know of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. Many people know of Jesus, but don't know Jesus. And so this woman is a Samaritan, and her people uh, were part Jews, part Gentile. And Jesus is saying, woman, you only know part truth. You don't know the God of the Jews. But we know who we worship because salvation came through the Jews. Salvation is by the Jews. Through the Jews, salvation to the world will come. So we know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and what? Jacob. Say amen. amen. Malik, say amen. amen. We know the God who we serve. But the hour coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship the Father if you don't worship Him in spirit. Uh-oh, circle out your Bible, make a note somewhere. We're going to go from that premise. Jesus said, the hour is come. What was Jesus saying? Anytime that Jesus spoke in the Bible and said that now is the time, the kingdom of God has come, now is the hour, my hour has come. He wasn't talking about a physical hour. It's an expression to mean now is the time. It's happening now. Remember Jesus said back then? Now is the time and the kingdom of God has come. Now. Now. Now is the time. So Jesus said, the hour coming. And now is. Say now is. Now is. When the true worshipers say true worshipers. True that's the problem. There are so many false worshipers. There are many, so many false people. There are people who, you know, just hate God. They hate the church. They hate each other. They hate other Christians. They hate other believers. They hate other ministries. They're not true worshipers. There are people who call themselves believers. They'll pray with you one month and next month. They'll abandon you and don't answer the phone no more. How could you be spirit led? I was coming today to the service and I didn't want to, I didn't want to be in the flesh and I was praying. I said, Lord, get my spirit ready. And all that came across my mind was Hurricane Dorian. Say amen. As we celebrate four years since that major hurricane typhoon hit the city, all I could do, and in fact it's this week, from the first to the third, all I can remember today, four years ago, that major storm. And I began to stop, and I don't know where that came from this morning. But saints of God, I begin to think of all those who call themselves Christian, who didn't even offer us a bottle of water. Uh oh, shout hallelujah. I begin to think about this family who the other day I went to hail, and they act like they're so surprised that, you know, we came to hail them. And I thought this morning, well, my God, we went through major hurricane, major storm. 
major flooding. And this supposed to be Christian family and another one who came to visit didn't even offer us a bottle of water. Uh-uh. No, sir. And, and I, I begin to think of all the other people who I saw had food and had water and who had supplies. You want to talk about hurricane? I remember the government in power didn't even come and visit the people on the ground here. You want to talk about, about Holy Spirit? I want to talk about churches that call themselves led by the Spirit. They didn't even come here to send the people a bag of rice. I remember business owners here who make millions of dollars who call themselves true worshipers. They never give the people a, a box of chicken to eat. Man, how could you make it in God's heaven like this? Huh? I see them all about on TV now. And people still have top on their roof. Leaking roofs. Moldy houses. <clears throat> and they want to talk about anniversary. Every year they come up with this anniversary. I wonder who they're talking about. Because the people who were affected, they ain't helped them yet. What, I, what am I saying? The hypocrisy is so great, mother. Huh? That's why Jesus said, the hour is coming and now is the true worshipers. And every day I live to see who are the true worshipers. Every day I live to see who are the true worshipers. Say true worshipers. I want them to sing in your spirit. Who are the true worshipers? Shall those who worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Two things. <clears throat> when you're talking about living the life of the spirit, it's worshiping the Lord in spirit. What is spirit? God is a spirit. He is pure. He is righteous. He is holy. He is limitless. truth. There are a lot of people who don't live in truth. Say truth. There are a lot of people you have to pray about their motives. You have to pray about their intentions. You have right now, anyone who I hire and bring around me, I got to pray about their motive, their intentions, their reason. Hallelujah. You hire people now, you got to wait almost a year before you can give them any contract to see who they are. Because people don't come in truth no more. If you're a liar, I rather you come as a liar from day one. At least I know you're a liar. If you're a thief, be a thief from day one. <clears throat> if you're a drunk, be a drunk from day one. Let me see who you are. But you got folk today, mother, who can mask themselves like a chameleon. They can mask themselves like a snake. That's why the Bible called them beware of snakes and serpents. <clears throat> Why? They can counterfeit themselves. I talk about in and out of the church. They go to church. They put on their resume. They go to church. Uh, hallelujah. They put on there. They're Christian. But when they you gather them in your workplace, excuse me, you get them around you in the house of God. They call themselves prayer warriors. They call themselves intercessors. Uh, they call themselves even pastors, uh, apostles, and prophets. And you get around them and they will thief, lie, steal, con, 
manipulate, try to get the upper hand on you and everything you have before you quicker than you can imagine. I mean this, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said in John 23, that people who worship him, the true worshipers, you're going to know them in 2023. They're going to be people of truth, man. One thing is worse than, there's nothing worse than a lie. Because if someone lies to you a few times, you don't know nothing they say. Nothing else they say, you can see if it's true anymore. You know some people who live a life of lie. Amen. They get up in the morning, they lie. They go to work, they lie. All through the day, they lie. I mean, there's a pathological liars. They're not true worshippers. And even if they don't lie, they talk about how, you know, oh, they got this, they got that. Oh, it's all a lie. Oh, I pray all day. Lies. Oh, I'm blessed. Lies. <clears throat> not only that, <clears throat> there are some men and women today, they live in a lie. How do I know? They leave their house, mother. Saints of God, and they have another. Let me be talking about it. They have a whole another woman. All of what they did is a lie. How could you have a whole woman come home, eat dinner, go back to your woman, live a lie with your sweetheart, live a lie with your wife, live a lie with your children? I know a man, hallelujah, he was living a life for a long time, a lie. He was sweethearting his secretary in. And the woman had a whole other children, one or two children for the man. And the man children growing up all around him. The woman is a family to the whole people. When those children found out that that woman had two, three children for their daddy, how you can imagine how they feel. Everything that man said in their mind now has become a lie. Everything daddy said when he said, behave, do good, be honest, be everything he taught them now becomes a lie. <clears throat> and that's happening so commonly. I had this family who called himself Christian. Man, listen here. After I went through some things and I saw how they turned their back on me, everything they taught and said and lived for, I see as a lie now. Because you're teaching one thing, but then when it's time to actually live that out, it's a lie. Everything you said, you preach from the pulpit, that's like me doing this. There's so many pastor colleagues who I know, apostle, prophets, bishop, they well know. They preach the word, tell you what to do. But their children live in horrorish lives. Their daughters are living horrorish lives. It's no way in the world. The Bible said, Jesus, the word, the scripture said, if any man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. He must run his household well. His children must be righteous. He must have a good reputation. I can't be here teaching the gospel at my household running a wreck. How can I be living a life and I'm a homosexual bishop? Preaching on Sunday, telling you how to live right and believe God and to be blessed. And then on Monday, I'm in a shocking up homosexual lifestyle all week. I can tell you what to do, <clears throat> but yet my children live any kind of raggedy, shocking up, living life like the devil. It cannot work! So hallelujah. Now, can we determine what our children do? Not all the time, see? But I'm telling you, there's a stance. Our children must know that we take. Why? It's for truth's sake. Say, for truth's sake. Come on, shout it. You might like this message, but shout it. Say, for truth's sake. Son, daughter, you might not like, but I got to rebuke you. I got to, I must tell you, the God who I serve, I serve him in spirit and in truth. And I can't live a lie. You might not like me. Shout hallelujah. But I'm going to spike you. You might not like me, but I'm going to chastise you.
you. You might not like me, but I'm going to tell you even if it hurts you because I got to live in truth. So, hallelujah. I remember before I got married and, and even after getting married, there were some guys calling to and say, you know, happy wife, happy life. But I don't find that to be true. And I look at these guys like when I see why they ain't going nowhere. Amen, oh my God. If you are a man of God and you can't even chastise or correct or lead or guide your wife, you're so scared to correct your wife that she ain't gonna give you a little sex later on in the night. You a weak man. Weak man! You gonna let your wife run all over you? That ain't how that's not God's righteous order. Say amen. All the women of God say what? Amen. amen. The Bible said God made man in his own image and in his likeness. And in his likeness made he male and female. And he put the husband as the head of the family. If we were to live by that, we would have homosexual and lesbian and LGBTQRST. We wouldn't have all this fight about changing law, about gender equality. You see, when you go away from the word of God, that's why nations are in trouble. God said, I made man, the man is the head of the family. If you a woman and you want to be a head of the family, watch out for that lesbian or Jezebel spirit. That ain't your role. Now if you have a weak jelly back man, then you got to take control. I was talking with my wife. We were driving around yesterday getting lunch for the family. <clears throat> and I looked around. I said, hey, because I saw a guy. I said, look at this guy, man. I said, I know, I know the guy. The guys, I know him and his wife. And the father-in-law is dead now. And I said, boy, that's something, man. And we talked about one or two other families. Once we saw them, I said, boy, some of these women... Marry some jelly bat man, eh? Some of these young girls went out there just to find man. Marry some weak man. I mean, the men are just sluggards. No job. No money. No leadership. Huh? No advancing of the family. No vision. When God made man, he said, I'm going to give you man vision. I and God gave that man a vision and an assignment and he gave him a whole garden, a house. At least you need to have a little apartment that have before and God even though you gotta have a place to live before he bring a woman in. God did not, hallelujah, let Adam and Eve build a house together. He didn't know God made man and he gave him a garden and he gave him assignment and he let Adam be in that home for a while by himself until Adam felt lonely. Notice God. Why? There's a point in a man's life where he should be busy about the work of God, the call of God, the assignment of God, and he needs his own place and his own space and his own direction. And then when he gets lonely, he says, wait a minute, this cat have two kitties. There's two dogs. There's two fish. There's two flamingo. There's two alligator. One male and one female. He went to God and said, wait a minute. God said, whoops. The boy is maturing now. I need to find somebody for him. And I'm telling you, God made him a wife. Say hallelujah. Whoa. It's nothing like when you're busy about the Lord's work and the Lord is making your wife. He's making your spouse. Why am I saying that? Some of these women marry jelly back men with no money, no job, not even an apartment to put the woman in. You are slugging. You're living in your mother-in-law house. The devil is a liar. Now you do that. Come on, you get married. Come on, a honeymoon. I'm living in your mom house or your mother-in-law house. You're a slugger. So no good man. Huh? That's why these girls are being lesbians. They don't have, they don't see strong men taking leadership. And so if the woman gotta be the leader, then she feel like she run the things. 
She making more money. That's why God made me and this way. I make more money than my wife. Hallelujah. Because I see if you let a woman make more than you, you will have trouble. Why do you think it's problem now today? Because back in the day, the man made more and he provided. Today, these women going off and making more than the guys, they would run the household. And Lord help you if you lose your job. Some of these women today, when that man was making money, paying all the bills, they live happy. The minute he loses job, the minute he that money stopped coming in like they used to, I heard guys who women walk off from the marriage and left them high and dry. I had a young man almost cry on my shoulder, and he told me, I said, what happened? You were in a big time name ministry in the city. <clears throat> you, the woman was singing on the praise team. The guy was there faith believing her. Y'all know the big name. And then the woman picked up and left the guy. And I asked him what happened. The woman told him plump, straight out. You ain't meet my needs no more. He didn't lose his job, I think. She just want more money and more things. She may be a god and ass up. She divorced the man. And have you ever seen a man broken? Boy, when you see a man was ministering last week and a man came and same thing. He talked about how is the boss? And man, the guy nearly cried and broke down right in front of me. You think men don't feel the boss too? A man more than likely feels the boss. Thank you. He feels it more when he's being provided and doing his best. And because a woman now meet a man who making more money than him, who have a better career, who seemingly have more assets, a big house and everything. No, I don't need it. Thank you. She don't want him anymore. Say amen. amen. I talk about a spirit led life, you know. So when you look at that, she probably didn't marry him in truth. She married him for money, for love, for attention at that time. But when she got what she needed and got her foot better on a better standing, she saw something else. She gonna leave the man, run off. How many stories you know like that? What am I saying? A lot of people don't live in truth. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people don't live in sincerity. They don't live in honesty in the realm of the spirit. And in, and in this hour, you got to pray and fast to see where people are really living. There are some people that don't smile at your face. I hate your guts. Trust me, if I don't like you, I can tell you I don't like you to stay from me. But you got some people today who can smile, laugh, operate in your face, be around you, and don't stab your guts, hate you, wish the worst for you, wish you to fall and to fail, and they right in your face. Yes, yes. And you got to, and, 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 and the Holy Spirit is so amazing, he'll tell you something in right there. I can't. And Lord, I don't want to be prejudiced, but it's just something. When I'm with this person, my spirit gets all up. You know, they all focus in. Something in here, my grandmother says, show me, it's just like balling up, tensing up here. That's the Holy Ghost showing you. Uh-uh, uh-uh, tensing it up. Because the Bible said, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. So in the spirit, one thing I learned how to do is be guided by the Holy Spirit that resides in my spirit. When you come to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who's the Holy Spirit? The spirit of all creation. The spirit sent in the name of Jesus. The spirit who was made and equal with the Father. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That spirit of God comes and lives in your spirit and lights the candle of your spirit alive. Awakens your spirit. And today you got to discern by the spirit. Why? Because sometimes you don't have all the information in your brain. You don't know all the information. You didn't hear the whole story. You didn't see the whole story. You didn't read the whole story about a person or a situation or a condition or a business or some plan. 
You need to live by what? The Spirit. You want to get married, you all single? You better live by the what? Spirit. And choosing some people. Yeah. There's some people now, some young people who I shared with who got married less than a couple years, two, three years later in the divorce house. Why? They went ahead and married people by the flesh. They married people by the sex. They married people by the money. <clears throat> They married people by, hey, I just want to wear a white dress and I want to have a big reception. No spirit involvement. One time ago, as a believer, at least you used to say, boy, I prayed and waiting on my spouse. You don't hear that no more. It's always they telling you up front, they pray ain't but nothing. They like someone, they go in for the journey. And I ask young people as I share with them, when y'all getting married? Uh, I just like marriage. The M word is like a cuss now. Married? They have no definite plan of marriage. The plan is to live however you can, shack it up, sweethearting, womanizing, manizing, living like the devil, drinking, partying, doing all kinds. Shout hallelujah. And when and if and maybe it pushed up the shelf. Maybe I'll get married. Remember back in the day you said, boy, by 23 I will be married. By 25 I will be married. By 30 I will have my children. By 35 I will be in my career. By 40 I want the children to be a certain age. By 50 I will be wrapping up my work. 60, 65, retiring and helping out a branch. I mean, we had a plan for life. Hallelujah. Say a plan for life. We had a spirit-led calendar in us. Today, people are living loose and wild with no hand and no direction. I tell you, the flesh will destroy your life. Yes. But Jesus said the hours come when we the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in what? True. For the Father seeking such to worship Him. Jesus is not interested. The Father is not interested in carnal, weak, lying people. Jesus said, I rather you be Luke. I, I don't like you being lukewarm. I'll spit you out your mouth, my mouth. Either be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. Jesus don't want no lukewarm Christians. If you can't come in here and worship, hallelujah, stay home. Jesus don't want it. It's coming a time and a day where the Spirit is going to desire some things from us. The Father, oh, excuse me. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> excuse me. The Father is looking for truth. He's looking for the truth in us. You come to church one Sunday, next Sunday you're gone. You come to God one month, next month you're gone. Now Jesus ain't impressed by that. Excuse me. That ain't what the Father's looking for. You pay tithe one week, then you don't pay tithe for the next six months. I was telling my wife about a family who we knew. And this family uh, was going to a church of a relative, and they were there for years. They came from the own island, and I mean, this relative of mine, you know, took them under and put them in their house and for years, for years, for years. Picked them up, they lived way on the eastern part of Grand Bahama, they would drive them into the city for church two, three times a week. And the man was a builder and he began to build the woman of God and started getting these big contracts. When he started getting them big contracts, he told the pastor, who's my relative, say he can't come there no more. Say why? He can't pay time no more. See, when he was poor, and they let him live in the house free and pick them up back and forth and didn't charge them until they got on their feet. It was fine. The minute he got that contract, maybe to build a house and got a hundred thousand or fifty thousand, that five thousand was too much to put the tide down. 
funeral and and his family went on, went on, went on, went on, number, number, number. One day I saw him, he came to me. He had a multi-million dollar building. Lost that. Then he got over up another thing. Lost that. Another day I saw him looking around, bumming around, around bumming around, bumming from a million, multi-millionaire. Why? All because he didn't love Jesus enough, mother. As long as the money was small, it was all right. But the minute that money got big, he didn't love the Lord in spirit and in truth no more. Does that mean he had to pay tithe on that five fifty thousand? That's five thousand dollars. He had to pay ten thousand on that hundred thousand dollar building contract, and others were coming. He didn't love Jesus good enough. He loved Jesus when he was poor and down and struggling. You see many of these rappers and singers, they're the same way. Especially gospel artists now. When they poor and broke, it's all right. When God started to bless them and open up doors, they forget God, man. God is a, a mystery to them. God is a myth to them. They're making money. They sing it on platforms. They're getting checks in the banks. Hallelujah. They're on magazine covers. They're on radio talk shows. They forget God, honey. Mother, sometimes I know you're praying and saying, where, where, where? But I realize folks don't want God. You can preach the best. You can pray the most. You can fast 24-7. You can do everything to love folk. Their spirit, they don't want God in truth. They ain't ready for God yet. They ain't ready for Jesus. They're not ready for the word of God. They're not ready to give up shacking up. They're not ready to give up liquor drinking. They're not ready to turn from their wicked ways. They still want to sit before the Lord. What can you do? But for those who said, Lord, I come to you with a pure heart. I don't come with no hidden agenda. Guess what he said? The Father is looking for you. Amen? Hallelujah. I, I tell you this week when I said that simple prayer and the Lord answered my prayer, I was like, glory to God. I didn't fast. I didn't pray all night. I just said, Lord, I need you to handle this situation and move this situation. And all of a sudden, move. That's what I realized when you're walking in the spirit and you're walking in truth, the Lord hears your cry. The Bible said the Lord hears the cry of the what? Righteous. The Lord can look at your heart and mind and see who righteous. Righteous don't mean you don't make mistakes. Righteous mean, man, I have a heart toward the Lord. The Bible says called David, a man after God's heart. I mean, David long after the Lord. He pursued the Lord in his mess. Now, that don't give you liberty to sin. But David at least was honest with it for the most part. Amen? Watch this. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's turn our books to John. Let's move quickly. We have a few more scripture verses. If you like to say amen. We're talking about the spirit-led life. This is going to transform your life. Now, the spirit-led life produces power. I told my wife as we were coming out here this morning, the Lord is going to transform us today. Say amen. John chapter 3 verse 1, Jesus is talking about a story. Uh, uh, but first of all, there was a man, let's read verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, what? Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I said to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me help you with this. This is saying that, come on, I need you to like this shit. I'm getting ready to speak some things into your life and into your family. Jesus said to this man, this man was a high-ranking ruler. That goes to tell you that not because people wear all these religious garments means they save. I know some pastors who ain't saved. I know some bishops who ain't saved, who's backslidden a long time. I know some prophets who can prophesy who ain't saved. Here's a man who was a ruler, 
a teacher, a rabbi, a leader in the religious circle. And so because he was this ruler, he was too ashamed to come in the day when Jesus was preaching. But Jesus was teaching such a message that he had to sneak out to see Jesus late, 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 late one night. And he acknowledged that Jesus, here is an example of a man who knew Jesus but who didn't know Jesus. He knew of Jesus because he said, Rabbi, I know you are a teacher come from God. You know there's some folk who know you of God but too ashamed to come and talk to you in the day when other people are looking. There's some people who, who know God's highness on your life but will never affirm it publicly because they don't want people to know that they know that you are a woman of God. There are some people who know the call of God in your life. There are some family members who will never acknowledge the call of God in your life because they know the minute they say it, it acknowledges that they need to repent, they need to change, they need to apologize for what they said and what they did to you. It takes too much. There are some people who know the miraculous hand of the Lord is on your life because they see how God brought you uh, through many valleys, through pain, through trouble, through trials, and you still are excelling in the things of the kingdom of God. And they're watching you from a distance. There are some people who are so jealous and envious. Who are so stuck in their religion. They are so in their religious order. They're so among their class. Hallelujah. They, 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 this religious man, he, he was too big. Why? He used to hang out with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeah, hallelujah. And what is the saying? This man is like some people in this country. They so high and mighty because they know the prime minister. They know the minister. Don't you know knowing them don't mean a Christ thing about your soul? Huh? Don't you know you could know them and still be on your way to hell? Don't you know you could know them and still be lost? Don't you know they need Jesus too? Don't you know the prime minister needs Jesus? Don't you know the cabinet needs the Lord? Don't you know you and I need him? So sucking up to these people don't mean you have righteous standing with the Lord. Not because you know bishop so-and-so and archbishop and prelate. Uh, because you know, hallelujah, archbishop and archdeacon. And because you know, uh, hallelujah, apostle this and apostle that mean you close to God. I know some people who think they suck up on the man. I know this young man in the church I used to go to, he used to suck up to the bishop. The bishop, the bishop, this. He was the bishop's lackey. And that was good. He served. But he used to mash people down because he know he had access to the bishop. Um, he used to control with witchcraft. How many know there's witchcraft in the church? Yes. Why? Because if you think now, I know bishop, so that means I'll cut you down. I can tell the bishop don't let you sing. I can tell the bishop don't let you pray. I can tell the bishop don't let you serve. I can tell the bishop let you serve and you'll serve next Sunday. Next Sunday you'll be preaching. Next Sunday you'll be teaching. Hallelujah. You're like the sissy of the church. That's what it is. Jezebel of the church. And the young man was a sissy idiot. That's how sissies are controlling the church. They latch on to the apostle, the prophet, the bishop. And because they're giving money, because they can decorate the church, because they can fix up the church, because they got the, they organize the events of the church and make the pastor, the man, and the woman of God money, they put the sissy in position, hallelujah, on a Jezebel woman who they know can hold conference and hold events and hold things and put events on nights and make them and the church look good and then at the end of the day the pastor and the minister get a big lump sum money in their pocket they put the Jezebel or the homosexual are they talking the truth amen. say amen. amen and guess what happened a couple of years ago there was a church argument and guess what happened? The bishop cut the sissy fella right off. 
when I saw him, he was crying to me. I said, I, I thought my mind, that's good for you. I'm sorry for you because you want your position. You want your money. He was getting your salary from the church. Hallelujah. He was doing your functions. You thought you were uppity uppity there with the archbishop. With the bishop, you was up there with them making your money. Hallelujah. Walking around, going to all the events in the car with them. Walking up in the pro with the program to all the big events of the city. And when the church God in crisis, they the first one say amen. Boy, you see, he thought he was going to get away. And guess what? They cut in all his salary, all his benefits, all his uh, 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 gratuity. He thought he was going to get for doing this stuff all the years. And he was out like a pauper. He was about calling. Holly, no, I know. He called me to beg me for money. I said, look at this bugger. When he was in power, he treated us like a dog. Hallelujah. Kick us out the church. Hallelujah. Talk bad about us. Hallelujah. Confidence. Uh, hallelujah. He did all kind of evil uh, to stop us. Uh, who are young people who wanted to grow in God? Because he had the power back then. And then years later, what well, called me mother to borrow money? Because your loan mortgage is running up. You built big house of the church. <clears throat> big Mercedes of the church. Uh, live your life of the church. And now when hard time hits. I said, brother, I, right now, I can't help you. And my mind went back on Hurricane Dorian. I said, these are the same buckers. When Hurricane Dorian hits, he ain't even called to see how I do it. Now you see God turn it around for me, turn it around for us, but call me to borrow money from me. And you were the same snake trying to destroy us. Anybody who is rising up in the church, you know there's some people like that. They cut you down. Some of these ministries, they don't let you do what we do in here. Let you preach, teach, pray, worship. Some ministries will never go in that pulpit. It'll take you 20 years. Because why? They don't believe in raising you up. They always want you to be a follower. They always want you to be uh, following how great they teach and how great their ministry is. They don't want you to uh, rise up in God. What am I saying, people of God? Man, this man Nicodemus thought he had arrived. Saw the power on Jesus' life. Know that Jesus was from God because he was doing miracles that they had never seen before. Jesus answered him and said, Verily I said to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. The Bible, this expression, born again, means born of the spirit. We're going to see this in a minute. Say, I'm a spirit. Unless a man be born of the spirit, this word, he cannot see the kingdom. I studied as this word, see me to experience the kingdom. It don't only means see with your eye. Jesus said, unless you are born in the realm of the spirit, by the Holy Spirit, you cannot even experience kingdom living. Now you get it. Say amen. amen. Nicodemus, John chapter 3 verse 4 said, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? <clears throat> Jesus said, this man is something else. You're supposed to be a high-ranking teacher of scripture and you can't even interpret this? Jesus answered, very, very, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. The spirit has to be spirit born. That means you have to come to Jesus. The only way you can be born of the spirit. Again, shut down on Abbasia. How do I know? Genesis 1 and 26 to the end says, God said, let us make man in his own image and his own what? Likeness and let him have dominion over the earth. That means we by nature are already spirit born people. Yes. The minute we are born, every human being is born body, soul, and spirit. But because of the fall of man from Adam, Every person who is born is not born again by the Holy Spirit. What do I mean? Every human who comes into the world is born 
body, mind, soul, and the spirit. They have a spirit, they possess a body, and they have a soul. Yes. However, due to the fall of Adam in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 2 and 3, every human being born is born disconnected from the spirit of the creator God. Jehovah, Adonai, the Elohim. So in order for us to live truly a spirit-led life, we have to go through Jesus. That's why Jesus came into the world to die on the cross, to shed his blood, to be the redemption for what? Sin. To be the payment, the propitiation for sin. To be, hallelujah, our redeemer our Savior and our Lord, but he also died so that man can be born or reborn in their spirit back to the Lord. Because Adam and Eve lost connection with the spirit. The spirit of the Lord left them. How do I know? The Bible said, uh, Malik, when they ate the fruit, Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the garden, and Adam said, I am what? Adam and I am naked. All right, thank you. Go sit there and listen. Because the Spirit of the Lord left them. Adam and Eve said they were what? Naked. Thank you. Sit down. Very good. Adam and Eve did sin because they ate the food that God told them not to eat. Very good. They ate the fruit that God told them not to eat, and all of a sudden, that Spirit that covered them and led them and guided them departed. Some people call it the glory. Shout the glory. The glory. The glory of the Lord. The Shekinah. The doxa. The doxa of the Lord lifted from them. They were naked. The spirit of the Lord departed because sin had come in. And so even though they were born, they were not born again. Hallelujah. And they had to wait what? 4,000 years almost before Jesus to come into the earth for man to be able to be what? Born again. Come on, Ishan, hallelujah. You know how blessed we are. We're able to be what? Born again. We're able to have the opportunity to come in the name of Jesus uh, and receive what he did on the cross uh, and be born again. Jesus said, verily, verily, John 4, Sorry, 3 and 5. Except a man be born of the water. The water is when you are born into the earth. Through the birth canal. You're born. That's one way. When you came through your mother's womb, the water bag had the birth. You were born by water. You came out of water. Amen. Yes. Come on, shout out. Hallelujah. Then, now, <clears throat> and you were born a spirit being. And now the second birth or the rebirth is going to happen when you what? Receive Jesus as Lord, then he borns you by the Spirit, and then you got to be baptized by water. What happens when you be baptized by water? You go under, I am crucified with Christ, and when you rise, you rise again a new creation. Shout hallelujah! You know what this is saying? You got to be baptized by the Spirit and you have to be baptized by water. We were going on the beach yesterday and Malik said, Daddy, when I go to the beach, I forgot. I want you to do what? Huh? Baptize me. Shout hallelujah. He's being born of the Spirit. He's being baptized by water. But this is that I didn't ask him. And he said, I got to take it to be baptized by water. Hallelujah. He asked. Hallelujah. The last time we did it, this time he asked. He wants to be baptized by water. Amen. He's already been baptized by the Spirit. How he found that out is by the Holy Spirit. What am I saying? The Holy Spirit can speak to anyone at any age. There's no age limit. We put limits on people. Remember, this is by the Spirit. You don't need no knowledge of it. He saw it somewhere, or the Holy Spirit spoke to him somewhere and said, I, I, I want you to come to me and be baptized by water. And then he said, I won't be baptized by water. Next. 
John chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Most people are born by the flesh. Most people are living by the flesh. What is the flesh? The flesh is the part of your being that says, I'm going to live to fulfill this. So if I want sex, I have sex with who I want to because my flesh wants it. If I see someone on the road and uh, I want to have sex with them, I have sex with them. That's my flesh. Whatever my flesh desire. If I want cocaine, I go and start cocaine. That's what my flesh wants. If I want marijuana, I go find marijuana. That's what my flesh wants. The flesh is the part of you, the unregenerated part of you that desires to fulfill its own lust. Huh? Whatever your flesh desire, if I want a five pound steak, I do it. If I want to go get drunk this evening and sleep with two prostitutes, I'd wake up and start cocaine until I'm tripping. That's what the flesh, that's what it means to be born of the flesh. Whatever that part of nature of me wants to do, I live out, I fulfill, and I carry out without any consciousness to what the scripture wants, what the Bible wants, what God wants, and what the word of God says in his Bible I must live to do. Because Jesus said what? The words that I speak, they are what? Spirit and they are life. So when I read the words of the Bible, I'm reading something that's spiritual. When I apply it, I'm living a spirit-led life. If I don't do that, if I say, uh, hallelujah, the Bible says in the beginning God made Adam and Eve, and I want, hallelujah, I'm a man and I want another man, I live it by my flesh. What's the argument? Constitutionally. Remember that there are two things. Spirit-led constitution. Uh, that comes from this Bible. This Bible is the spiritual constitution of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. This Bible is spiritual. This Bible has wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight into how to live a spirit-led life, how to live in another word for spirit-led life is life as in Christ, or eternal life, or godly life, or righteous life, or holy life. All of these talks about spirit living. Say amen. Then, there's a law of every nation called the Constitution. Here, yeah? here's the Constitution of this nation, of America, of Canada. Every nation has its own what? Constitution. Now, many times the Constitution of that nation doesn't line up with the Constitution of the spiritual kingdom of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Say amen. <clears throat> Sometimes the laws of the land of a nation do not line up with the laws of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Say amen. 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 So the laws of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, which is the law of Christ Jesus, it's the law of the spirit, it's the law of life. It produces life, it produces righteousness, it produces holiness, it produces eternal life and eternal living. It pleases the King Jesus and you will inherit certain blessings and favor on your life by obeying it. Sometimes that don't line up with the constitution of the land. Just give examples. So the laws of the kingdom of God, which are spiritual, said, God is a spirit. He made man, Adam, and then he made a woman called Eve, and he put them together for marriage. The law of man and the flesh and of Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom is run on lies, rebellion, the flesh, and everything that's evil. So Satan gets in the minds of people and say, forget the law of the spirit, forget the law of the kingdom. A man, if I'm a man, I want another man to fulfill the desires of my flesh. Or I'm a woman and I want to fulfill the desires of my flesh. I don't want a man. I 
want to fulfill my desires of my flesh and my body and my emotion and my mind and I want to have another woman to do that with. And so I, I go to the government of a land and I tell the leaders of the nation, hey, I'm a human, I'm a citizen of this country, I have a constitutional right to equal access. And the laws of that land have to say, you're right. You are a citizen. We cannot give you a driver's license. We cannot hold back education from you because you desire to do something private in your bedroom. And you see the problem? Sometimes we are fighting the world with the world. You can't win the world battle because the world says every man is created equal. So every lesbian, homosexual, bisexual, LGBTQ, RST, transgender, non-binary, cross-dresser, murderer, criminal, pedophile, drug dealer, gun dealer, has a constitutional right. And we've been fighting that battle wrong because we're supposed to fight it in the spirit. If we were teaching, preaching, declaring, living, operating in the realm of the spirit and telling people from children what they are, then the devil wouldn't have had enough time to get this type of philosophical lifestyle. If we who were spirit led would have lived the right life, then our children, hallelujah, when I say our children, the children in our city and our nation wouldn't desire to be a woman if they're a man. They would have seen the joy of being a man. They would have seen the joy of being a leader. But when you have Jezebel as your mother, and that spirit of Jezebel creeps in, how they do it, she dominates the husband, dominates the young boys, the boys grow up to be effeminate. I love my mother, but I want to be like my daddy. I don't care what, amen? It's natural for a boy to want to be like his daddy. Hallelujah. You can get mother's love and attention all you want. I wanted to be a man. And when I got a certain age, I wanted to go work and make my own money. That's what I did. I started packing groceries. Mommy, no, I don't want your money. I started paying for my stuff when I was 14. I was packing grocery at the grocery store. I worked at a summer's shop, pumping gas and changing tires and checking hoods at the gas station. Hallelujah. I went and worked at Super Value uh, food store and I packed up shelves. I worked at Courtesy food store and I packed groceries. Then I worked at CIBC Bank as a teller for a few months until I went back home to school. And every summer I work and my mother can't tell you the last time she had to pay for no school, no school of uniform and miscellaneous money. I had my own because I wanted to be a man from a young man. saw a father love her and care for her and show her how a man should treat a woman. How in the devil she can want another woman? Huh? You have a father! You really want that? And a man can take all the responsibility. My wife, she got good. I, I got to lift everything. I got to clean up. Huh? I got to help clean up. Sometimes I got to help make the breakfast. I got to keep the house uh, uh, clean and paint and, and move the supplies and lift the stuff and pick up stuff and buy the grocery. Hallelujah. Pay the bills. You want to do that? You don't want to do that. You want to be a woman. Amen. Then God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. What am I talking about? Spirit life. Why you want to be a lesbian? When you want to, you want to be a mother. You want to know what it is to bear a child in your womb and put that child on your breast and suck. Hallelujah. No normal man wouldn't want to see a child who look like him. No normal woman don't want to have a bear, a child growing in her tummy. In a war that she can give life to. That's a desire God put in normal, healthy spirit people. Say amen. amen. 
What's another law of the spirit? So what am I saying? See? So pastors and leaders, shut your mouth up. You don't know what you're talking about. Every time you see them marching by the LGBT, you can't win that war like that. It's a spirit war. These persons are occupied by another spirit. They're not born again by the spirit of Jesus Christ. Know you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and they that defile it will be destroyed. Don't you know that Jesus said if you, yes, God live the life you want, you're going to destroy it. Drink all the liquor you want. I was listening to a guy's story the other day. How he became a successful businessman, went to the hospital emergency room and found out that his liver was failing because he was drinking himself to pieces. Seven figures making money. But yet, he was drinking himself to death. And in fact, he was going to die. He had a few days to live if he didn't get a liver transplant. And by some miraculous way, the prison called a young man who had died in the prison, who was a chronic drug user. And they asked him if he wanted that liver. He said, yes, I need it. They flew out that liver that very night and put that in him. And that's why he's alive today. But what am I saying? The law of the Spirit said your body is the temple. Do not be drunk in an excess with wine. You want to drink yourself out the pieces? Go ahead. Your body and your spirit will be destroyed. You want to smoke cocaine? Go ahead. That's the law of the flesh. Fulfill your fleshly desire. Know that there's a penalty. The Bible said that the wages of sin is death. How all the women you want. I know this young man I was trying to minister to. Oh. He keep playing Russian roulette. Think he's going to escape. Many young people, young men, I think he's trying to escape death. Come from out. Trying to escape death. What do I, what do I mean by that? They go and sleep around and just happy when they don't find out they get tested the how they eat. That's how they're living. They're living, hallelujah, unrestricted. Everything their body wants to do, they're fulfilling. There's a payment when you live after the flesh. You're going to die naturally and you're going to die spiritually. What is spiritual death? Separated from the Lord. You're going to die in the flesh. You're going to miss being connected with your creator because your flesh, you didn't surrender to the Holy Spirit's leading. You didn't surrender your life to the word of God that brings spirit and that brings life. You didn't want the wisdom of God. You didn't want the teachings of the words of Jesus. People are living their lives, but yet when trouble hit, they will call on God. I know this young lady, she lived all kind of dirty lifestyle. Hallelujah. Three man at one time. Hallelujah. 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 Pregnant and don't know who it's for. Living all kind of dirty lifestyle. Party, drink, live our life. When trouble hits, I saw it all the day. She was dealing with a man who will come with shirt on with Bible scripture. When you put on Bible scripture shirt, Jesus ain't going to live you there. You done live your life to the flesh. You done drink all the liquor you want. You went to all the parties. You slept with all the men. You tried, You did whatever you wanted to do in your secret corner, in your secret life. You did it all in your private life and in your public life. Hallelujah. Then when crisis comes, you think now the law of the Spirit will work for you? No. Hallelujah. That's what a lot of people do. They want to play with the flesh. They want to play with the devil. They want to play with sin. They want to live their own life. And then when things get bad, they think God automatically know the Lord is not Santa Claus. You're not going to do what you want and then put your list in and he's going to fulfill it. No, you got to live the life of the spirit. Watch what Jesus said. First John. 3 and 5. I'm trying to get through all of this. Jesus answered it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and born of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of hell. God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. He said, hey, if you want to be in the flesh, you're born in the flesh, you want to continue to live the life of the flesh, you are a fleshly person. If you want to live the life of the spirit, 
then you are in the spirit. Jesus said, now the Lord that I say unto you, you must be born again. For the wind bloweth where it listed, and you hear it, the sound. You don't hear the sound, but can us tell where it come from and where they go in. So is everyone that is born in the spirit. Jesus said, just like how the wind blows and you don't see it. That's how people are born in the spirit. Lord Jesus, come into my life. The spirit of God comes into you. Recreates you, rewards you in the spirit. Yes, that same other person is looks the same way, eh? Huh? On the outside, you look like the same person. You sometimes you feel like the same person. You still have the same name. You still have the same skin color, hairstyle, body shape. You're still going back to the same job or house. But in the spirit, you made a commitment, Jesus. I want your spirit and your life to come in my life. And I want you to take away the desire of the flesh and let the Spirit of God rule my life. And all of a sudden, <laughs> amen, you're born of the Spirit. All right, let's move quickly. John 14. I'm going to read a few more scriptures, then we go. Are you hearing me? We're talking about I am Spirit. When you're born of the Spirit of God, you live a life that is limitless. You live a life of power. And it's just not a mysterious thing being born of the Spirit. No, it means that Jesus said the words that I speak. How do I, uh, okay. Jesus was, let me give you another example. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And the devil came to him. Uh, the first thing he came with him to tempt him in his flesh. Your greatest battle and my greatest battle is overcoming our fleshly desires. Now here it is, Jesus is fasting. He is putting down his physical, emotional, yes, thank you, Satan tempted Jesus, and the first thing Satan tempted with is saying, now you're supposed to be fasting. Jesus was putting down his fleshly desire so that he could receive spiritual instruction and power. That's what fasting is. When I turn down my plate from eating, I'm saying I'm pulling away, feeding my fleshly body, my physical body by giving it nutrients, energy, minerals, vitamins that it needs to live. I'm so putting that down temporarily to receive at that time spiritual insight direction guidance and reconnecting to the Lord that's what fasting is so if you don't eat a meal just because you forgot to eat a meal that was not for a spiritual developmental direction that you put aside to be with the Lord and hear from him amen so starving is not fasting in the spirit. Now people starve for all types of reasons around the world. But the fast that Jesus is called is a fast where you put down food and the desires of your fleshly body to separate yourself to be with Jesus and his word and his spirit so you can get life and instruction. Say amen. Amen. So here comes Lucifer, Satan, to tempt Jesus. He knew Jesus was set in a time to be before the Lord. And the first thing he said, why don't you turn these stones into bread? Now to you and I, that seems like, wow, that ain't a big temptation. And sometimes when you plan to fast, that's what the devil will tell you to do. Why? Because the devil knows, <clears throat> demons know, the mere fact that if you turn down a plate of food to seek the Lord, the reward you're going to get in your spirit, the reward you're going to get in your spiritual life, the direction you're going to get, the miracle you're going to get, the breakthrough you're going to get, the bondages, the yokes, the addictions that will be broken of your life. Do you know how many times uh, I fasted and prayed and others fasted and prayed and addictions were broken? If you have an addiction to alcohol, if you have an addiction to pornography, if you have an addiction to sexual sin, if you fast, the Lord will break that out of your life. Shout hallelujah. It 
spiritual. I can't explain all of it. But I do know what you did when you fasted is you allowed the fleshly desire to be oppressed and broken. And you allowed the desire of the spiritual things in your life to become greater. That's what fasting does. And when you live a life that causes your spirit to be greater, then God can move greatly in your life. Say amen. And so Satan came and tested Jesus with what? Turning stones to bread. Say bread. Because he wanted him to eat that and fulfill his fleshly desire. But what did Jesus say? Get me behind me, what? Satan. For it is written, man should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What was Jesus saying? Satan, get from me. I understand that man should live by what he eats. Every human needs to eat to live. But he said, listen here, man should not only live by bread alone, but man lives by two feedings. Say two feedings. Man should not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes from the mouth of God. We are a dual being, body and spirit. The same way you eat food every day, it's the same way you should feed on the word of God. The food fuels your physical body, and the word of God fuels your spirit, body, and man that's in you. Shout hallelujah. You can build muscle, and depending on your diet, you can build certain qualities in your life. If you want to lose weight, you can tailor your diet. Low carbs, high protein, fruits and vegetables. If you want to build more muscle, you eat more protein, lean protein, less fat. See, if you want to be an athlete before they train and run, hallelujah, those Olympians, they eat a certain diet to get their body in shape to what they need. It's the same way in the spirit. If I want to break addiction, my fasting is going to be different. And my word that I read, if I want, if I want to break an addiction from pornography, I'm not going to read scriptures on prosperity. I'm going to read scriptures on Hallelujah, the Lord will deliver them out of trouble. Hallelujah, know you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and they that defile it will be destroyed. I'm going to read scripture on Hallelujah, Hallelujah, righteousness exalts the nature, but sin is a reproach. All fornicators, liars, thieves, and lovers of the flesh will have their place in the lake of fire. I'm going to read scriptures on the flesh. Hello. I'm going to read scriptures that's going to tailor to where I need to go. If I believe in God for a miracle, I'm going to read scriptures on my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. That my God can do all things, whatever I ask in Jesus' name. I'm going to get the scripture that deals with the promises, that deals with the spirit aspect, and I'm going to use it to build my spirit so this week I am charged and ready for the week. I go to churches and teach all of the time. And when I go to teach, guess what happened, mother? I ask the people to pull 10 scriptures and they can't. So people are fat in the flesh and skinny, or what we call the Bahamas whack out. There are some people who are Joneses, skinny, whack out. Maga. There are some people who are maga in the spirit. They're just skins and bone. Why? They spend no time in the word to fight in their faith. They spend no time to support their faith so they can't pray. Or when they pray, there's no power. When they pray, there's no miracles. When they need a word from God for direction for their life, they make it out of a fleshly decision. They move in the flesh. They make decisions in the flesh. They buy a car in the flesh. That's why I keep breaking down. They move out of place in the flesh. <laughs> They move out of a church in the flesh. They go to another place in the flesh. Hallelujah. They get angry. They get upset. Hallelujah. Over them, the grass is greener. They leave out of the spirit. Where God was building their spirit. Where God was building their faith. Where God was building... 
glory, miracles in their lives. And they miss God. Say they miss God. Say amen. amen. John chapter 14, verse 17. What does it say? Let's go back. Let's go up. Sorry, sir. Let's go back up here. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. That's spirit. See that there? Don't tell me you're worshiping the Father if you come through Jesus. Circle that in your Bible. If you're a Rastafari fairy, no, you can't come through uh, Haley Selassie. You can't come through Marcus Gabi. Hallelujah. You can't come through. Hallelujah. The prophets. Hallelujah. If you're a Hindu, you can't come through Lashmi, Vashti, Shiva. You can't get to the Father. If you're Muslim, you can't come through Muhammad. Jesus said, no man coming to the Father but by me. You can't get to the Spirit-led life. You can't get to this God who is Spirit. We read it earlier. That means He is limitless. He is all-powerful. Then you're Spirit. Because our God, Jehovah, is Spirit, He is omnipotent. That means He is everywhere. As all power, sorry, he's omniscient, he knows everything, everything. He's omnipotent, he has all power, he's omnipresent, he's everywhere and in everything. Come on, give him praise. Uh, that's why we worship him. He's a spirit. Yes. And Jesus said, You cannot get to the Father, this omnipotent God. That's why I hate the, even the word God. The word God is just a title. You cannot get to Yeshua. You cannot get to Jehovah. Or back in the day, they didn't have a J service. Yehovah. Yehovah. You can get to Yehovah. You can't get to Jehovah. But through by Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus said it, and that settled it. Jesus said, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. Henceforth you know him and have seen him. Jesus said in verse 9, John 14. Jesus said unto Philip, have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. Circle that. Man, come on, man. All of these dead religions who say Jesus is not God and Lord. That answers that, isn't it? Yes. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. Jesus is God in the flesh come down in the earth. How says thou then show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works, that's spirit led life. When you live a spirit led life, the Father does the works to you. Shut down Robosia. The Holy Spirit, let me put it this way, the Holy Spirit does the work. The Bible said, one of the pastors, the Apostle Paul or Peter said, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you and I. Glory to God. That's a Spirit-led life. That means the same thing. Jesus said, greater work shall you do. Why? Because I go to the Father, but I'm sending the Spirit to live in you. The same Holy Spirit that did the miracles in Jesus' life live in you today in 2023. And you are following Jesus Christ. I tell you because of the Spirit, I am limitless. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm limitless. I'm, I'm not going to blame anyone anymore from this day forward. All I got to do is tap in the Spirit and I'll get my miracles. All I need to do is tap into the Word of God and I'm going to get my healing. All I got to do is tap into the Word of God and I will get the same power that rested on Jesus. Uh, that miracle working, I want you to hear this in your spirit. The same power that rests upon Jesus. The same power that raised the dead. The same power that healed the sick. The same power that walked upon water. The same power. The same Father. The same Holy Spirit. Jesus said it right here. That was all on him, the, 
Spirit. The Father did the miracles through Jesus. That same Spirit is in you today. What person can stop you now? Even if they try, no weapon that forms against you shall prosper. They can lie all they want. The Holy Spirit will mash up every lie. If you open your mouth and rebuke it, that Spirit of God that's in you will say, Rise up and rebuke like Jesus rebuked the waves. Like Jesus rebuked the raging sea. Like Jesus rebuked the demon-possessed man at Gatherin. Hallelujah. If you rise up with the same power, you can rebuke the same devils that speaking lies, that speaking death, that speaking destruction, that speaking failure over your life, the same power that you need for miracles if you need a miracle in your life that same word of God that same Holy Spirit will produce the same power that's on Jesus' life Jesus said believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself Jesus said even the words I speak came from the Father that spirit led life. I can't wait to live like that. Say, Lord, make me a spirit led life. Say, Lord, let the words I speak be from the Father. Oh God, say it loud. Say it like you mean it this week. Oh Lord, let the words I speak this week be from the Father. Oh God, He's hearing me. Say, Oh Lord. Let the miracles out of my life this week come from the Father. Now you said that he knows if you mean it. I ain't gonna complain no more. Look at your neighbor and say, I can't complain anymore. I can't murmur no more. I'm not going to use my words to complain. My words are spirit. My words are life. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak the spirit. I'm going to speak the will of God over my life and my family. I'm going to speak the purpose of God over my life and my family. I'm going to speak the purpose of God over my investment and businesses. I'm going to speak the favor, the grace, the mercy, the blessing, the overcoming power over my life. And I'm going to rebuke the lies of the devil and I'm going to settle it every day in the spirit. Say, I'm going to settle it in the spirit. Lord, if I had a hundred people to shout in here today, they would have tear this up. If you got a revelation of what that is, that means uh, your destiny is back in your hands. Jesus said in verse John 14, 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Jesus said, if you can't believe the, the, that the Father in me and I'm in the Father and we're one and I'm Emmanuel and I'm God in the flesh and I'm the power of God and I have the fullness of the Holy Spirit, at least look at the works I did and determine it. Have you seen anyone raising the dead like I did? Have you seen me open up death? Ears and blind eyes. Have you seen me heal the paralytic? Have you seen me cast out devils? Have you seen me rebuke the winds, the waves, the waters, the tree? Have you seen me call a fish up from the ocean and the coins come out of his mouth to pay your taxes? Have you seen me tell you throw the net on the other side and fish that would supply your business for the rest of your life came into your boat? It was so much you had to call people from the side and of the lake to help you pull it to shore and to pull it onto their boat. I changed the economy of your life forever. Have you seen when I heal Peter's mother-in-law of a fever? Have you seen when I sent my word and healed a centurion soldier's son? Hallelujah. Have you seen when a woman with an issue of blood bleeding 12 years touched me once? Hallelujah. And it frees up immediately. Have you seen my teaching? Have you heard the revelation I have of the kingdom of God? If you don't want to believe what I say, look at what I did to validate it. I need to prophesy today. If some people don't want to believe in life, watch what you're going to do for God. Come on, give God praise. Watch what you're doing for God. If they don't believe God is with you, watch what you do. They can kind of deny what God is doing in your life. I believe these people are Bahamians. They don't believe nothing you say until they see you. So tell them that you'll ask God, let them see. When you write that bestseller, let them see. When you build that edifice, let them see. When God overpowers you and brings you to the forefront, let them see. When they know everything they tried to do to stop you, but you still overcome, let them see. When they thought you was 
in a mountain, nothing but God raise you up and bless you. Let them see her. When they got to see your name on everything that they got to do, let them see her. When they see the, the checks coming from her with your name, let them see her. When they have the testimonies that's going around the city about you and your name and what God is doing, let them see her. Since they don't want to believe her, hallelujah, the Lord will make sure her. some of your enemies have witnessed her. Oh God Almighty, let them see your children. Let them see your marriage. Let them see your family. Let them see your business. Let them see your bank account. Let them see the books, the tapes. Let them see it on television. Let them hear you on radio. Then they will know that there is a God that is on your life. They don't have to believe you no more. The Lord said, I'm going to send it. Jesus said in verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also. Say, do also. I can't wait to do all the same miracles Jesus did. I can't wait to do all the miracles Jesus did. I can't wait to do all the miracles Jesus did. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, either Jesus is lying or we don't have the faith to believe in the spirit that we have the same spirit life like Jesus. Because if I believe what Jesus said, then everything I see in this Bible that Jesus did, I'm supposed to have the authority in the spirit to do the same thing. Now I know Jesus is not a liar. Verily, verily, he said it every many times you see verily, verily, it means for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure, I said to you, he that believe on me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also. Now Jesus said, just, just come up to do what I did. And greater works. Oh, I'm looking for the day. The church has a far way to go. The believers in Jesus Christ has a far way to go. I wrote a book on the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I want you to get that from Amazon. I'm still trying to do the, the, the miracles Jesus did. Oh, glory to God. Now, I've seen demons cast out. We pray to see deaf ears open and black eyes see. I've seen people filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of praying in tongues. When we lay hands and prophesied over them, I've seen the Lord prophesy supernaturally by the Spirit and give information. But oh, I'm waiting to see some deaf, some, some crippled legs grow. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm waiting to see some spirit led miracles. This is what the church will be teaching. Say amen. amen. I'm waiting to pray. And I'm going to listen, this week I saw some miracles. This year I've seen some miracles. So I know that the spirit, my spirit, your spirit, our spirit is getting stronger. What do I mean? The stronger your spirit gets. How does your spirit get strong? By eating the word of God. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that coming out of the mouth of God. I mean, the more we meditate on the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We walk by what? Faith and not by sight. The words that I speak, they are what? Spirit, they are life. The more we eat the word of God, the more we eat the bread of life, the more we eat, partake in the spirit of God, the stronger our spirit gets, the more faith we have, and the greater our charge is to see the miracles of the Lord. Yes. And because our prayers are being answered quickly, now, watch what Jesus said. I'm bringing this to a close. I have a spirit. Watch what Jesus said now. Jesus didn't just say, ah, greater work should you do and, uh, and do the works that I do. And, no, watch what he said. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, say believe. believe. You gotta believe in the spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead. You gotta believe that Jesus is Lord and God and Savior and all powerful. Say, I believe, Lord. You gotta believe he's a healer. You gotta believe he's a miracle worker. Yes. No, you can't think about it. You gotta believe it. You gotta know that.
that when you repent of your sins, all your sins are washed away. Immediately. You got to know that he's coming back again. No, you can't guess that. You got to know that he built this church and you are part of this church. You got to know his Holy Spirit lives in you and I. Say, know it. Know it. The works that I shall do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do. Because I go unto my Father, and what? And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Say, that will I do. What are you asking in the name of Jesus that needs to be done in your life? <clears throat> After the day I told you, you're going to be in trouble. If you need food and you're not asking in the name of Jesus, so that the Father will be glorified, don't go blaming nobody today. If you need bills paid and you're not asking in the name of Jesus, going to the Father, because you know He is limitless in the Spirit, don't blame anyone today. Whatsoever you should ask in my name, whose name? The name of Jesus. Are you asking things in the name of Jesus or are you complaining and murmuring? I say today, go to the rest this last quarter of this year and everything you need, go home and write it down and ask it in Jesus' name. Go home and put a list, hallelujah, before you, after you finish eating your dinner or whatever, spend some time today and write out what you, the Bible said you have done because you what? Ask not. You don't have what you want from the Lord because you don't ask Him. You go and ask people first. You ask friends first. You ask family first. You ask strangers first. And then you get mad when they don't answer and you think God didn't answer you. But Jesus said, when you ask, ask the Father in my name first. And Jesus said, I will do it. Say, I will do it. Say, I will do it. Shut. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I will do it. So if there's some things in your life you don't have, don't blame Jesus. Because Jesus said he will do it. Now because Jesus watched us, say watched us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Malik shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said this. Now watch this. Jesus said I will do it. Here is the challenge. Jesus is spirit. The miracle it's coming from the spirit realm. Yes. It's coming from the Father in the name of Jesus by the spirit from heaven down through time to you. Amen. What does it mean? It means sometimes the miracle takes a little time. It's coming from eternity into what? Time. Say eternity. Into time. Sometimes Jesus has already answered and we move out of position by being in the flesh. Say amen. amen. So Jesus said, listen here, it's an appointed time for your miracle to land and you're supposed to be in Kami on September 3rd, 2023. And guess what happened? <clears throat> the miracle, the revelation, the healing, the power of God shows up on the 3rd to Kami. But guess what? You let your sister-in-law move you out of where you're supposed to be and lead you by the flesh somewhere else and you miss your time and your miracle. You missed your one time. Remember, the remember there was before Jesus came, that crippled man, there was a story. The Lord would send down an angel once a time in a season to that pool, huh? That pool of Bethsaida. And he would stir the pool. But every time the man, he, he would miss getting to the pool in time because he had no one to put him in in time to get that story. There is an appointed spiritual time where the Lord always shows up. There is an appointed time and an appointed season that you need to be in the right place to get your miracle. I am so sensitive today, Shalabah will tell you, I try not to move any place, any time without getting the Spirit's leading. Because I don't want to be in the wrong place 
at the wrong time to get a demonic attack. Say amen. amen. The same way you could be in the right place at the right time to get the miracle from the Lord, you could be in the wrong place at the wrong time to get a demonic attack. Say amen. amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There were some people who should have been in here. They would have been healed, delivered, set free, gotten their breakthrough and miracle, but they missed their time, their season, and their place because the devil convinced them, hallelujah, that there was something better in the flesh or something better their eyes saw, their ears heard, or someone convinced them to move out of the spirit and go into the flesh. Some of them ain't here because they shock it up. Some of them ain't here because they slept with a man they should have slept with and they should have been in church today, but because of the guilt, the shame, and condemnation. They are there now. And this is this word that would have transformed their lives today. As a man, because of pride, the pride of life and pride of what people will say and think and feel about them, they choose not to be in a place where God sent them to hear a word to be delivered, to raise up in the things of God. They prefer to hide in the back chairs of a place somewhere else, uh, distant, so they can continue living their lives unrebuked and unchecked by a person who desires to see them grow in the spirit. Jesus said in Luke John 14 15, if you love me, keep my what? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another what? Comforter. That he may abide with you for what? Forever. Say forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwell with you and shall be where? In you. I'm going to wrap up on the scripture. You're going to come back for part three next week. Or well, sometime this week I'm going to do all that. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, I am going to physically leave this world, but I'm not going to leave you without the help and the support in your spirit life. While Jesus was in the earth, he was the source and the strength of their revelation. Remember? He would teach and teach and teach and preach wherever he go. And the disciples and all who followed him were filled with his words. They were touched by his power and his healing. And Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed, go to the cross, die, so he could reconcile the world in the spirit realm. Say the spirit. This is going to help you and I. Why? Because this means today, if I don't have all the money I want, if I'm filled in the spirit, that's greater than anything. If I didn't get the car, mother, I should, I don't need to be down because in the spirit, I'm connected with God. That's the greatest miracle. My greatest place is not my academic achievements, really. I'm going to help somebody today. As I learn the life of the spirit, I, I like to study, but guess what, mother? I don't grade myself on the amount of degrees and letters behind my name no more. I don't grade myself by how much money I have or don't have in the bank. I don't grade myself by what car I have or don't have. I've lost what size house I have and don't. This is what 90% of the people in the world spend time thinking about. That's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe ye in God. You believe in me, believe also in the Lord who sent me. Jesus said, man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses only. 90% of the world's population measure themselves against other people by the what? Flesh, not by the spirit. And that's even in the church. Because if we don't really measure ourselves, we would say, hey, let me see how deep my love is. How deep is my prayer? You want real? You want real living? How much time I spend in the presence of the Lord every day? How much time I spend in prayer? How much time I spend in worship? How much time I spend reading His Word? That's the true measure of success. How strong is my spirit? How deep is my faith in the Lord? How much am I telling the world that Jesus died on the cross to save your sins and mine? Come to Him now. Be born again and receive eternal life. 
be born again and come into his kingdom. That's the true measure. My true measure is not what shoes I can buy, what pants. This has nothing to do with the spirit. This is all natural. This is in the flesh. Huh? The food I eat is for what? To fill the flesh. These clothes I'm wearing is what? To cover the flesh. These jewelry I'm wearing is to beautify the what? Flesh. The makeup you're wearing is to cover the flesh. The grease you put on the hair is to cover the flesh. The soap you made with is to cover the flesh. The car you buy is to drive the flesh. The house you live in is to cover your flesh. The man you sleep on is to rest your flesh. The air conditioner you put on is to cool your flesh. The water you drink is to please the Flesh. The sex you have with your spouse is the fulfill your flesh. You see how much of the life the job you go to is the fulfill your flesh. To get a salary to cover your flesh, to pay the bills for your flesh, to feed your flesh, to dress up your flesh, to put on makeup on your flesh, to put on jewelry on your flesh, to ride in the car on your flesh, on the highway of flesh, to travel on vacation for your flesh, to rest in a hotel on your flesh, to see new places for your flesh, to take pictures of your flesh, to put on Facebook for your flesh, to put on Instagram of your flesh, to put on YouTube with your flesh, to put on Facebook of your flesh, to show other people your flesh. And other people to see your flesh, and other people to show their flesh, and nothing to do with the spirit. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why Jesus said, "Take no thought what you can eat and what you can drink and what you can wear. All of that is just for the flesh." And I used to live for it, and some of you still living for it. There's nothing wrong with taking a little care of the flesh. But Jesus said, don't let that be the main cause of your living. But seek ye first, what? The spirit realm. Seek ye first to be born by the spirit. Seek ye first to be led by the spirit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek to be born of the spirit. Seek to be born. And those that are born of the water and of the spirit, you can now experience the kingdom of God. Jesus is what? Spirit. His words are spirit. Being born again is of the spirit. His kingdom is coming back. It's in the spirit. His body is going to be made new in the spirit. We can have a new spiritual body. We can have a new spiritual name. We can have a new spiritual flesh. We can be born again what? In the spirit. We can have eternal life in the what? Spirit. Jesus is going to create a new spiritual Jerusalem. He can create a new heaven and a new what? Earth. This old earth will be what? Passed away. It's going to be brand new in the spirit. You see that? Jesus said the spirit of truth. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to come into you and I. He's called the spirit of truth. He's called the comforter. And when you come, when he comes in you, you will know him. Stop arguing with carnal, fleshly, sitting people about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said they cannot receive it. They've never seen it. Neither they, they can, they don't know him. But you know him because he dwells in you and he shall be in you. Yes. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And that day you shall know that in verse 20, I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Shout hallelujah. When you live a Holy Spirit land life, Jesus come and live in your life, and the Father comes and live in you, and you dwell in them. Oh, I don't care, you can call it Trinity. Some believe people don't believe in the Trinity. That's their business. I don't care what you will call it, Trinity or no Trinity. Jesus said, I am the Father, the Father in me, and I in you, and you in me. Whatever you want to call it, it sounds good. Hallelujah. Jesus. The three of us. Notice what he said. The three of us. Watch this, man. Read it. John 14 and verse 20. And that day... 
And that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. It's not that much your son and your daughter, your husband and your wife, your best friend. Let me tell you something as we close out. This spirit land life is between you, the Father, and Jesus. I didn't tell my wife and family, you all better get to know Jesus for yourself. i got to get to know him. I, hey, I love all of you, but I'm going to know Jesus. I ain't going to hell for nobody. i got to pursue Jesus. You better pursue Jesus for yourself. You tell your children, honey, I ain't going to hell for you. You can live a life in the flesh. Honey, you might not like me. You might kick me out. You might reject me. You might abuse me. But guess what, honey? I'm going to live for Jesus. Because there's coming a day. He's going to judge the living and the dead, the quick and the dead. And my daughter ain't going to be there. My son ain't going to be around. Oh, my wife ain't going to be around. Everyone will stand before the Lord God for themselves. The spirit of life. Some people in the flesh travel a couple times. Your daddy's a pastor, right? Don't you love me? See, yeah, so what I got my own Jesus to follow. Amen. I follow him. No, he got his destiny. I got my purpose. My mother have our destiny. I am mine. My brother have his. I got mine. My sister got no. This ain't no corporate thing. Jesus deals with you one on one. Now, if all your family serves him one on one, then y'all can get together and worship him and spread the truth together as a family. But Jesus said, These are my mother, my brother, my sister, those who do the will of my Father who sent me. There are some people who want to live their lives. I hear me. I close on Galatians 5. I'll read it. No, you don't have to turn to it. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. It comes right back. Walk in the Spirit. Live a life of the Spirit. Live a Spirit-led life. Another Paul said, they, Romans chapter 3 and Romans 5 said, they that are led by the Spirit, they are, and Romans say, they are the sons of God. Yes. Ain't too many sons around here. Because a lot of people around here live for the flesh. This city is filled with fleshly Christians. If you can call it that. Because if you're fleshly, you can't be a Christian. Jesus said, if, you, if you, you live to the flesh, you lie. You ain't living in the spirit. You're not saved. You don't know me. Those who know me live in the spirit and live righteously. Watch this. Walk in the spirit. What is the spirit? What we learned today is the spirit, the word of God. The spirit of God. Prayer, fasting, live according to this word, and you will not fulfill the desires of the fleshly nature that every human being has. For the flesh war it against the spirit. The flesh lusts and fights against the spirit. Every day, your battle is going to be the spirit of the flesh. <clears throat> Who's winning your battle? Many people, the flesh is winning their battle for the last 10 years. They can't tell you one spiritual victory they had. Lie, thief, steal, murder, do evil, love, hate people, jealous, envious, angry, bitter, no fruit of the spirit. Watch this. And the spirit wars against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. I feel sorry for folk. Why? They won't do great things. I hear them. Oh, God's going to bless me. And I say, uh-uh, this person ain't going nowhere far. How do I know? Watch this. Pastor, how you judging it? Watch this. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are these. Pastor God, watch this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. <clears throat> hey, prophetess. The works of the flesh are manifest. I can read them for you. You know what he's saying? Paul is saying, when your flesh is so full and so ripe and so matured, yes, these are yes. this is what's going to 
to manifest. Yes. See, guess what? For years you can hide your sin. For years you can pretend to be a Christian. For years you can pretend like your life is so connected with God. But when you see these things show up in your life, know that it's already full and to its maturity. Say amen. amen. Adultery. Yes. When someone in adultery, they've been seasoned in sin for years. It didn't start with adultery. It started with lust. Then they start lying. Then they approach that woman. Then they talk to that woman. Then they lie to their wife. So they got a meeting to go to. They lie to their husband. I got to do this. Then they talk into the sweetheart. Then they talk into the lover. Then they give the lover money and things and time. See that? All oh, that's the flesh. Then they want their sexual desire fulfilled. Then they go into sexual immorality. And then they fulfill that. Paul said, the works of the flesh will show up in these ways. For the adultery. For the tension. Live in fornication, your flesh already in, in operation. I talk to young people around the city. I can't believe the amount of young people just living all kind of sexually promiscuous lifestyle. Now I know we more mature in the spirit to understand. Yes, God ordained us for marriage, and God ordained us for righteousness. But it seems like it's a free all sex now. It's like no consideration that this is illegal and wrong. This is wrong in the spirit realm. What is fornication? Because I have they have a false prophet on, on internet going around saying fornication, premarital sex is done in the Bible. You're a dummy. It's a ignorant. You know prophet. He's an angel of hell. Fornication means sexual intercourse before marriage. Sexual intercourse with anyone before marriage is fornication. Sexual intercourse with another person while you're married is adultery. Uncleanness. Every bit of uncleanness. All types of drinking, drugs, pornography. The Bible don't have to explain all of it out. Pornography. Pornography. Tattooing. Drunkenness. Lying. Hallelujah. Sleeping around. Hallelujah. Masturbation. All of this is uncleanness. Hallelujah. Dirty room. When I go to a place and I see someone have a dirty, dirty room, I know they have a spirit of uncleanness. All of this flesh. Lasciviousness. That's like Junkanoo Carnival. Going around in your naked nastiness in the streets. Hallelujah. You're shaking yourself up. And do you know that's all in the Caribbean? I mean, the Caribbean people have done some great things, but its greatest downfall is these four same things. Just when I watch Carnival, <clears throat> that now we are exporting to the world, but it began in these Caribbean areas, it's full of adultery. You go to Carnival, what is Carnival? The celebration of the flesh. I told you that before. Two words, carne, vile. Festival being a party or celebration. Carne means what? A, 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 a animal that eats only flesh is called what? A carne or. Thank you. And in some language, the word carne means flesh. People go to carnival to commit adultery. People go to carnival to commit fornication. So why would a Christian nation promote carnival? Why would our young people go on the streets and have lasciviousness, nakedness, pornography, orgies, oral sex, all that deals with uncleanness, lasciviousness in the streets. 20. Idolatry. Half of the world is under idolatry. They're under the flesh. They're governed by the flesh. Talked about idolatry, say idolatry. I know this is long, but I need you to get this right now, Malik. Say idolatry. Idolatry. Say witchcraft. witchcraft. Anyone who practices witchcraft, obey a witchcraft, sorcery. We, 
We have some nations in the Caribbean, they follow the flesh. All they do is do witchcraft. Oh man, there's some people from certain countries in the Caribbean, all they do is witchcraft. Wherever they go in the world, witchcraft, oh man, voodoo. What are they? Full of the flesh. And they call it spiritual. You gotta be careful with them. Because they can play like they're spiritual, but they really call on the flesh. Hatred. Say hatred. Hatred. When you see people hate you, stay far from them. They full of the flesh. And one thing about the flesh is this. You could go from any one of these at any time. Say amen. amen. Watch it. Hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy, and murderers, drunkenness. Say drunkenness. Drunkenness. Pastor. Pastor, do I can I drink? Do you say drunkenness? I live for the simple mistake. Stay right there. Rambling, Junkanoo Carnival, and of such, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things, watch this, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not only when Jesus come, you ain't going with him. But it means on the earth, you ain't have no power and authority in the kingdom in the earth. Now, I was telling you about this. So Jesus, I mean, Paul is saying, if you commit adultery, don't come to church because you live in a lie. You inherit God's blessing. All of these sweet hearts talking about that blessing, that you favor. You lie. You ain't going to make it. You will have no inheritance of God's kingdom now or when he comes. If you are fornicator, I got a bunch of young people think because they sing in choirs uh, and they dancing on, on in the pulpit, uh, hallelujah, or they ushering, or they go to youth Sunday today, they get free bag and, 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 and books. Now, because they participated, playing the keyboard, and they are living a fornicated lifestyle. I met a young man at the bar, and I said, listen to me, man, I want to talk because he's a great musician. By the time we finished, I said, give me the number. Because in the past, he would never answer the phone. I wonder why. But I heard things that he was a homosexual. By the time I left the barber, he jumped in my car with another sissy man, put the windows up and drive off. I didn't hear from him again. I sent him one message, hey man, how you doing? He ain't answered yet. He said, when you are a, a fornicator, yes, you have some of these guys who are great musicians who can play the keyboard very well. But I'd rather play a CD and sing, clap in my hand and play the tambourine than let a sissy play and bring that because you're deceiving them. Yes, right. Or lesbian, or fornicator, or an adulterous deacon. It don't matter if we know and get report that you are living in the works of the flesh. You need to sit down, get yourself cleaned up, yes. and delivered before you come back. In the house of God. We can reject you, but you gotta get clean up. You can't sit up here and we let you play, and everyone knows you're so homosexual and you're living a gay lifestyle. You ain't struggling, you living it. It's one thing to struggle, but hey, I wanna sin against God, but I'm fighting it to the end. To another thing, when you're giving up and you're with the sissy man, you sissy in each other, man. Don't go get each other. Why else you will be with another sissy fellow? You don't get each other. You're the lovers. You're just hiking a ride. Of all the people, you can call a woman. You can catch the bus. You see the flesh. You can call your daddy, your cousin, your auntie, your brother. You call another homosexual. That's what you into. Now watch what I mean by this as I close. You could go from adultery to fornication to hatred to wrath. And I found that people who walk in the flesh, they in all these things. I found that the people who walk in hatred, they drunkards, they envious, they murderers. They might kill you with a gun. But Jesus said, you hate a man in your heart without a cause, you a murderer. 
They'll kill people character. They'll assassinate some, especially these homosexual. When you see someone as a homosexual or lesbian, they operate in all these things in the flesh. They in a holiday, they in adultery. They sleep with a man, woman, boy, and girl. They fornicators, they sleep with a man, woman, boy, and girl. They unclean. Of course, if you're in fornication, you're unclean. Because you're dealing with nastiness. Huh? You're dealing with anal stuff. Huh? You live with all kind of unclean toys and games and stuff. You live in a nasty life. You live in from man to man to man to man to man to woman to woman to woman to woman. You live in an unclean, unnatural life according to the spirit. Now the law and the constitution says you can still be whatever you want to be and no one can touch you. That's fine. But according to the laws of the kingdom of God, you're nasty and unclean. Take that up with Jesus. Because I know some homosexuals watching. Tell them, take it up with Jesus. Jesus said you're living unclean. It's unnatural. It's not right. It's dirty. That's why you feel dirty after you do what you do. And they can go from that to idol worship. Most homosexual lesbians, fornicators, adulterers, they are also idolatrous. You don't know that? They follow themselves. They full of pride, full of arrogance, uh, think they're better, smarter, more gifted. Don't listen to nobody. Like when Malik Mal- Mal- was, we went somewhere already, marine spirit. He thought he, he looked at a lady and said, she looked like a mermaid. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible talks about the spirit of the beast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Leviathan, that's a sea creature. That's the father of the spirit of pride. Most people who are in this lifestyle have a nasty demon spirit called Leviathan. It's a spirit of pride. And so they worship idols. What they do? They worship themselves. Most of them who in this lascivious, worldly, fleshy lifestyle, huh? watch what they're doing now. Anytime I see someone with all these different hairstyles, all these tattoos, all these piercing, all these tattoos all on their body, all of these piercing, I know they're in flesh. You cannot be living the life of the spirit and you're passing up all your navel, your breast, your private parts. That's the flesh. You do that to stimulate flesh. You mark up your body to for fleshly glory. And once they in that, guess what? Most of them, there's being new age. They don't be Christian. There's being yoga. There's being Eastern religion. There's being some mystical thing. There's being some weird philosophy. They don't believe the Bible no more. They believe all men are this. They talk about some weird religion. Some old occultish thing they be involved in. Some occultish thing they online with people. Weird cultish people is be involved in. It's be full of hate. It's be full of wrath. They don't love nobody. They don't love their parents. They don't love their friends. They don't love their brother and sister. They're in the flesh. They're in rivalry. Why? Because all these spirits and demons are operating in their life. They're in heresy. People who are in heresy, watch them. They're adulterous. You see all these people come knocking on your door on the week with this heresy. Watch most of them. Most of them are adulterous and fornicators. I tell you what the word of God said. Most of these people, <clears throat> I know a man in Nassau and many around here, they are teaching this new thing. Jesus, a uh, black Hebrew, and they're just some Jehovah Witness. Most of them who I know, they're most of them in adultery and fornication and uncleanness and drinking and drunkenness and wrath and corruption and strife and envy and, and drunkenness. All who I know, the word of God is true. Everyone I know who are in this special cult and a cultish religion that don't believe Jesus is Lord and don't believe in the Holy Spirit, don't believe in the blood of Jesus, and don't identify themselves with the body of Christ. They have some special knowledge. All of them is being adultery. I know one of them now. He's a big time elder, but he's a fornicator. Most of them who are elders are fornicators. The women are fornicators and adulterers and live unclean lives. They live lives of lying and deception. They lie, 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 lie. So unfaithful to family, unfaithful to bills, unfaithful to nothing in life. Why? They go from one spirit to the next. One flesh to the next. See, like, hey, 
when you're in the flesh, you're like, I just is fornicate. No, you can be in lying, thieving, stealing, drinking, partying, rivaling, deception, heresy, uh, sedition, hallelujah, uncleanness, unclean talk, cussing, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you, you, you're in fornication, you can be in cussing. You can be, that's why I tell young people, keep your life clean. Because the minute you open up to the works of the flesh, when you thought it would just be fornication, next thing you know, you're smoking dope, huh? you're using coke. Huh? When you thought you just a uh, heterosexual, when you open to that spirit of homeless, uh, uh, fornication, you know what you're going to end up being, mother? Most homosexuals didn't start that. They start off with a spirit of fornication. And when that spirit overtook them, then they start trying everything. And if you keep doing that, you're going to end up sleeping with your dog. Hallelujah. What's stopping you? If you're sleeping with man, woman, boy, and girl, you think like in Canada they have laws now you can sleep with your dog? Yes, you can marry a dog, have sex with your dog, yep. have sex with your cat, have sex with your pet. Yep. Why do why you think the Bible talks uh, in the Old Testament, the Lord said not to sleep with your animals? I mean, they was doing it. They was doing it in Israel. They were doing it in the Hebrew time. They were doing it. God's people were sleeping with their cow, their camel, their cat, their rat, their dog, their donkey. If he had to say, don't sleep with your animals, it means they was doing it. Shout hallelujah. These people that are deceiving themselves, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, say the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. When you get around people, you can feel the fruit. What is it? Love, joy, peace. Hallelujah. Let's pray this today. Say, Lord, let the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace be in my life. Long suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Hallelujah. Verse 24, Galatians chapter 5. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. If you are in Christ Jesus, you will tell that nasty, dirty flesh, I will crush your filthy head. Hallelujah. Yes, I might want to walk out on God, but devil go to hell. Yes, sometimes. I get tired serving the Lord but flesh I'm on a keep pressing on yes my flesh might want me to get drunk tonight but I can tell that flesh shut up I'm going to go on a fast I'm going to seek the word I'm going to lay down in the word of God I'm going to call a friend I'm going to call a prayer partner I'm going to call my spouse and say baby let's get in prayer my flesh is causing some trouble oh God and mighty hallelujah I'm going to find a prayer believing church Not people who are in the flesh too I need some spirit led Church members Brothers and sisters That when I feel Hallelujah These young people feel Like committing suicide They can find a strong brother or sister to pray And they're struggling with homosexual Some mother Father in the church Can bring them to the altar I need y'all help me To pray that devil and cast the hell out God, but we got too many hallelujah, weak jelly back fleshly church that are not filled with the spirit of God or filled with power. Our people come in one way and leave the same. Come in bound by sex and leave it a demon ten times worse. But we need the spirit of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah and Christ Jesus anointing to crucify the flesh with the lusts and the affections. The Bible says if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit. Hallelujah that's a message for next week. Living in the spirit is different from walking in the spirit. Hallelujah because I can be born again and have a life in the spirit but it takes effort every day to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Sunday. I gotta walk out this spirit life. I gotta walk out what the word of God says. I gotta walk out what the kingdom laws teach. When I wanna teeth, I can't teeth. If I wanna lie, I can't lie. If I wanna lust, I cannot lust. Children, obey your parents. I gotta obey my parents. I gotta obey them in the Lord. For this is the law of the spirit. 
of God, the law of the spirit of life. I gotta obey it. It don't matter what the world say. I gotta obey it. Doesn't matter what my government pass law on. I will obey the word. You can pass abortion all you want. The word of God said, thou shalt not kill. You don't have the authority to kill an unborn baby. You can pass the law and say personal choice. All you want, you're on your way to hell. If you don't repent, if you kill an unborn baby, you have blood on your head. And the judgment of God is going to be upon your life. Nurse, doctor, pharmacist, prime minister, government, cabinet, nation. Hallelujah. If you violate the law of the spirit, there's a judgment from the Lord to be upon you. Can't just make up your own laws and think the law of the land got oh law of the law of God's kingdom. Honey, you will meet a fiery hot hand to go to. Hallelujah. If I'm the only one preaching this in this country, I'm gonna preach it until Jesus comes. I'm gonna preach righteousness. I'm gonna preach holiness because we got a generation going to hell. We got a nation going to hell. We got a nation that has lost its way. We got a nation that has lost and spiritual life uh, and going after everything carnal and nasty and temporal uh, and not the things of the spirit and eternal life. On, but as the spirit give me strength, on, I'm going to preach the life of the spirit uh, that comes from Jesus Christ. I don't owe a man nothing but to love them. Huh? So I'm going to preach this gospel. Huh? You can talk all you want on Facebook and make your comments. Huh? You and the devil can go to hell. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? You know, I will preach this gospel. Huh? If you want to shake up your nastiness. Huh? And how about girls? Shake up their nastiness. Huh? On Jogadu. Huh? Hallelujah. You the, you're a big time minister in the church. Huh? But yet you're the head of the uh, 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 Jogadu Association. Yeah, you could be the two. Huh? The devil is a liar. You're a youth leader. What are you teaching them? Huh? Uh, yet, Chokanu, you got a young girl shaking up and, and grinding on the floor. Huh? Have the young man grinding up behind them. Huh? Have them out all hours of day and night getting grind up from man. Huh? Hallelujah. You have the drummers tote right up, smoke up, drunk up. Huh? Hallelujah. When they time to do the rush out huh? and you want to call that holy, huh? it's not holy. Huh? Take the sexing out. Huh? Take the nakedness out. Take the drunkenness out. Take the cocaine out. Take the marijuana highness out. And bring righteousness. And then I'll call it a righteous parade. You will have jungle to carnival. It's full of flesh. Hallelujah. Debauchery. Rivalry. Hallelujah. Sedition. Sexual immorality. Sexing. Lesbianism. And most of these jungle to carnival, all I see is woman grinding upon woman. Woman shake your nothing but a lesbian spirit, homosexual, showing your naked behind, showing your vagina, your private parts, showing your breasts, showing your body shape. I saw them last time. I got the video clip. They was having oral sex. The man was putting his tongue in the woman's vagina on the parade in the streets of this country we call righteous. We have lost our way. We got to come back to God. And that's why the nation is going to hell. Jesus. You want to talk about a hundred murders? And we don't want to talk. I've been preaching about abortion. Now that this young girl, I pray for her, the family, somebody family or get to slip up in the media. But young girls in this country are being raped every other day. Hallelujah. Young girls and young mothers are taking girls to pharmacies and having abortion pills on a regular. Where the devil Y'all come up now and we'll just come and pretend like y'all do something new and fascinating. Come on. Jesus. And from I was a young boy, young girls was getting raped and molested. You talk to mother that they'll tell you, but on these islands, some man raped the young girls. Hallelujah. From 50 and 60, from the time they have puberty, they bring them in. What y'all talking about? All of a sudden now, this big information now, young girl, 11, 12, right, and this being going on for centuries in this country, and that's why no, we lost our way. Talking about, what well, talking about abortion, and on the dog on book, if it's in the law books, send the doctor to prison, send the pharmacist to prison, send the nurse to the prison, 
Send the girl to prison. Send the girl boyfriend to prison. Send the mom of the girl who took them to the abortion clinic and bought them things to prison. Let's say it out, but put this on TV. If it's wrong in the law books, don't tell me there's no choice. Don't skate around, skate around. Who y'all trying to fool? Personal choice. Everything is a personal choice. If I want to blow someone's head off, that's a personal choice too. But it's murder on the law books. You got to put thy hip in jail. Don't tell me there's no personal choice. It's a personal choice to, to rape someone too. It's a personal choice to abort babies. We know that. That ain't a, don't try to fool us. Are y'all going to put someone in jail for doggone killing unborn babies in the womb by personal choice? It's my personal choice. I have a choice. I can go in there and sleep with every woman I want to. That's a personal choice. That'll make it right. Personal choice don't make it right in the spirit of God and don't make it legal. I have a personal vehicle. I can take that personal vehicle and ram down on the streets and knock people down. That's a personal choice. I'm not going to do these dumb things. I'm just saying, people have a choice to do whatever they want to do. Someone have a personal choice to slap you. And I have a personal choice to slap the hell out of their back. Amen? So don't tell me it's a personal choice. That's not the question. The question is, is it on the law books that is illegal for you and it's personal choice? Or the doctor's personal choice, or did it for money, it says it's illegal by any intent of a doctor to cause the death of an infant or anybody. It's wrong. And so the blood is on this land, and you wonder why certain people and families and certain things in the country can't break loose because blood is on this land, and God desires every blood that is shed. Yeah, they tell you a personal choice, but it ain't the personal choice of the girl when she's in depression and psychotic after killing the baby. When she spent the rest of her years when her womb has been damaged and now she can't have a baby when she want to get married and have a child. Or she bleeds out to death on that bathroom floor or in that bedroom on that hospital bed. Or she bleeds so severely, a doctor now gonna come and correct it and now gotta take on her womb. And now she's wombless. Or she sadly dies on the floor from bleeding so much. You ain't gonna talk about personal choice there. Whose choice is that there for her to die? Whose choice is it there for her not to have a baby later on in life? Whose choice is it there when she gets a severe infection? Because parts of the birth, products of birth, are left in her womb. And she gets a severe infection and septic and goes to the hospital and die or nearly dies. Whose choice is that then? Who's the choice then when the father of the young girl, who the girl went have an abortion, the young man, hallelujah, didn't know about it. And I seen young men cry on me after the girl abort the baby without them knowing how that makes them feel for the rest of their lives. We don't talk about that, the sleepless nights, the crying, the wetting the bed, the hearing the babies cry, the seeing the babies in their dream. Who deals with the psychosis, the, the depression, and the anxiety, and the trauma after that? Who deals uh, with the suffering girl, uh, after she goes uh, and does that at the command of her mother and the boy's parents to get rid of the baby? Uh, tell me uh, who pays for this? Uh, tell me uh, who suffers this? Uh, who does this? Who pays uh, when that bloody doctor makes money and kills and will afterwards? Uh, hallelujah. His bloody hands are not in jail, uh, but he can buy boat and car and house. Uh, but I tell you what, God sees you, you bloody doctor, you bloody pharmacist, uh, and you will never see the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. Unless you repent uh, and confess uh, for all the bloodshed you've done on this land. I leave it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, those who are listening and watching, I pray that the wind of God begin to expose stuff in this country. The flesh, the stench of sin that is higher, 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 that has come up to your nostril. The stench of this filthy land with its lies and its this religious deception, hallelujah, is uncovered and exposed. And until we truly turn to spirit land living, 
This nation will not see its full potential. It cannot see its full potential. Living in a life of flesh. And then lying Christians who pretend to be of Christ. Covering up stuff for political power. Huh? Covering up stuff because they want lights and plate and want posting and positioning and cabinet posting and they stay quiet on things when God puts you in those positions. The hand of the Lord be against you too. In Jesus' name, let's see if this nation is going to speak the truth to power or not. Lord, we thank you for this day. Seal it now. Seal us down in Jesus' name. Amen.